Vladimir Putin, in an interview with Tucker Carlson, criticizes Senator Chuck Schumer's suggestion of funding the Ukrainian effort, dismissing it as a provocation. Vladimir Putin questions the need for U.S. soldiers in Ukraine, highlighting the presence of mercenaries from various countries. He reveals that peace talks had reached an advanced stage but were hindered by a Ukrainian ban on negotiations with Russia. The conversation also touches on Vladimir Putin's interactions with President Biden, the future of AI, and suspicions about the Nord Stream explosion. Don't miss. Why does Vladimir Putin consider the call to fund the Ukrainian effort a provocation? What obstacles have arisen in peace talks regarding the conflict in Ukraine? How does Vladimir Putin view Elon Musk's initiatives in AI? And what does he say about the CIA's alleged involvement in Nord Stream? One of uh, our senior United States senators from the state of New York, Chuck Schumer, said yesterday, I believe, that we have to continue to fund the Ukrainian effort or U.S. soldiers, citizens could wind up fighting there. How do you assess that? This is a provocation and a cheap provocation at that. This is a provocation and a cheap provocation at that. Some people view discussions about supporting Ukraine's financial efforts as mere cheap provocations. Instead, they prefer a mindset rooted in healthy skepticism toward manipulative language, advocating for genuine and substantial dialogue. I do not understand why American soldiers should fight in Ukraine. There are mercenaries from the United States there. The bigger number of mercenaries comes from Poland, with mercenaries from the United States in second place and mercenaries from Georgia in third place. Well, if somebody has the desire to send regular troops, if somebody has the desire to send regular troops, that would certainly bring humanity to the brink of very serious global conflict. This is obvious. The focus is on maintaining stability, being cautious in international relations, and avoiding unnecessary conflicts to prevent an increase in global tension with the deployment of conventional troops. That would certainly bring humanity to the brink of very serious global conflict. This is obvious. Do the United States need this? What for? Thousands of miles away from your national territory. Don't you have anything better to do? You have issues on the border, issues with migration, issues with the national debt, more than 33 trillion dollars. Don't you have anything better to do? You have issues on the border, issues with migration, issues with the national debt, more than 33 trillion dollars. To understand how resources are allocated, it's crucial to examine how the United States handles this task. This includes addressing domestic issues, focusing on national interests, and resolving internal challenges before getting involved in international conflict. You have nothing better to do, so you should fight in Ukraine? Will there be talks, and why haven't there been talks, about resolving the conflict in Ukraine, peace talks? There have been. They reached a very high stage of coordination of positions in a complex process, but still they were almost finalized. Moreover, the president of Ukraine has legislated a ban on negotiating with Russia. He signed a decree forbidding everyone to negotiate with Russia. We know that he is putting forward some ideas about this settlement, but in order to agree on something, we need to have a dialogue. Is that not right? But in order to agree on something, we need to have a dialogue. Is that not right? Underscores the importance of dialogue and negotiations in resolving conflicts diplomatically. It advocates for fostering agreements, promoting understanding, and avoiding confrontations to achieve peaceful resolutions. Well, but you wouldn't be speaking to the Ukrainian president, you'd be speaking to the American president. When was the last time you spoke to Joe Biden? I cannot remember when I talked to him. I do not remember. We can look it up. I cannot remember when I talked to him. I do not remember. We can look it up. The emphasis lies more on objective information than personal connections, especially in diplomacy, where verifiable facts take precedence over subjective viewpoints. You don't remember? No. Why? Do I have to remember everything? I have my own things to do. We have domestic political affairs. Well, he's funding the war that you're fighting, so I would think that would be memorable. He's funding the war that you're fighting, so I would think that would be memorable. Understanding the complexities of us financial aid is crucial, requiring careful attention to key aspects of international relations, all while ensuring transparency and accountability in diplomatic engagements.
Well, yes, he funds, but I talked to him before the special military operation, of course. So when does the AI empire start, do you think? <laughs> You're asking increasingly more complicated questions. To answer them, you need to be an expert in big numbers, big data and AI. To answer them, you need to be an expert in big numbers, big data and AI. Understanding artificial intelligence involves navigating its complexities with deep insight. It requires valuing both accumulated knowledge and practical experience alongside respecting traditional wisdom. There are reports that Elon Musk has already had a chip implanted in the human brain in the USA. There are reports that Elon Musk had already had a chip implanted in the human brain in the USA focuses on providing information to individuals without taking a stance either for or against it. It empowers people with data, encouraging them to combine the conservative value of objectivity with their own viewpoints. What do you think of that? Well, I think there's no stopping Elon Musk. He will do as he sees fit. Well, I think there's no stopping Elon Musk. He will do as he sees fit. The proposition acknowledges the autonomy of individuals and private organizations advocating for unrestricted innovation and decision-making. It emphasizes minimal government intervention and champions individual freedom, serving as a catalyst for fostering creativity. Who blew up Nord Stream? <laughs> you for sure. I was busy that day. <laughs> Nate, it, do you have... Do you have uh, I did not blow up Nord Stream. Uh, thank you, though. You personally may have an alibi, but the CIA has no such alibi. You personally may have an alibi. Tucker Carlson's innocence remains intact within the framework of democratic principles and the presumption of innocence. Do, do you have evidence that NATO or the CIA did it? You know, I won't get into details, but people always say in such cases, look for someone who is interested. With the backing of CIA, of course. The organization you wanted to join back in the day, as I understand. We should thank God they didn't let you in. Thank God they didn't let you in. Amidst a collective sense of relief, there's a prevailing feeling that Tucker Carlson, who embodies individualism and skepticism towards government agencies, managed to avoid any involvement with the CIA. Although it is a serious organization, I understand. My former vis-a-vis -vis in the sense that I served in the first main directorate, Soviet Union's intelligence service. They have always been our opponents. A job is a job. A job is a job. Professionalism transcends mere job roles and personal viewpoints. It hinges on the fusion of personal responsibility and a strong work ethic. Vladimir Putin's remarks shed light on geopolitical tensions, emphasizing skepticism about the motives behind U.S. involvement in Ukraine. The interview underscores the complexity of peace talks and the challenges posed by diplomatic restrictions. Vladimir Putin's casual response to questions about his interactions with Biden adds a layer of intrigue. The discussion on AI and the playful exchange on the Nord Stream explosion injects a mix of serious and lighter tones, offering a glimpse into the dynamics of international relations. In decoding Chuck Schumer's words as a budget-friendly provision, Vladimir Putin appears to engage in a blend of political rhetoric and an exploration of potential motives behind such statements, casting doubt on political maneuvering. This analysis unravels Vladimir Putin's scrutiny of foreign policy choices, sparking inquiries into the rationale for the U.S. Military's involvement in Ukraine, shedding light on American mercenaries in the region, musing on personal responsibility, and challenging the purpose of military interventions. His commentary extends to pressing U.S. matters like border concerns, immigration, and national debt, prompting reflections on the significance of this decision by dissecting the shift from domestic to international disputes, offering insights on priorities. The discourse delves deeply into peace talks and the Ukrainian president's refusal to negotiate with Russia, presenting an analysis of barriers to diplomatic efforts and dialogue while underscoring the vital role of communication in conflict resolution. Vladimir Putin's response to the inquiry about his last conversation with Joe Biden marked by a lack of clear memory, pragmatically focuses on the transient nature and implications of political relations. 
Further discussions on AI and Elon Musk ponder the significance of emerging technologies and their societal impact, acknowledging technological progress and the evolving human environment. Conversations revolving around the Nord Stream explosion and Vladimir Putin's potential involvement with Tucker Carlson blend humor and geopolitical commentary. This can be interpreted as a satirical exploration of serious topics, reflecting the democratic concept of seeking and navigating meaning through humor in challenging situations. Vladimir Putin's remarks concerning the CIA and Tucker Carlson's interest in joining the agency shift the focus to political history and personal motivational context, expressing skepticism about intelligence agencies and emphasizing personal choices and pursuits. What do you think? I promote myself and my videos. Hello, I'm Bong Sim, a Canadian resident of Asian descent. During the day, I work as a professional counselor, and at night, I do Uber food delivery. Instead of speaking in my videos, I prefer to express myself through writing. In today's world, speaking the truth can have serious consequences, both for my professional life and personal well-being. That's why I'm choosing to pen down my thoughts and using a platform to share them on my behalf. Some people find my videos uninteresting, too strict, and they even criticize the appearance of the individuals featured, including their tiredness, Asian, or perceived flaws. I understand these concerns, but I genuinely believe in the purpose behind creating these videos. Unfortunately, recent Canadian legislation has resulted in the censorship of free speech and online content, and although Google hasn't explicitly admitted their involvement, I suspect they play a part in it. Despite my efforts to monetize my content on YouTube, I haven't been able to earn any income from it. I've tried three times, and all my attempts were rejected. They turned me down for reasons like lacking creativity, not having a recognizable face, or not having a distinct voice. Nevertheless, I've made several adjustments to my videos, hoping to overcome these challenges. If you share my belief and support what I'm doing, I would genuinely appreciate your backing.